Hey everyone, I'm Douglas. I'm a colorist based in Paris, in France, and I specialize in grading commercials, music videos, and longer form. In fact, you might have seen my work on Instagram, I'll leave a link in the description, YouTube, TV, or perhaps streaming before. This new YouTube channel is dedicated to color grading, and here I'll cover things from basic grading principles to advanced techniques and workflows. For this first episode, we'll look at how to set your project settings and also which tools I think you should focus on when grading your first few shots. The version of Resolve that we'll be using today is still version 18 because version 19 has just been released, it's still in its beta phase, and I'd prefer to wait until it's stable before using it on real world projects. Without further ado, let's dive in. All right guys, so welcome into the color page of DaVinci Resolve. It's really dark in there, but I'm gonna try and shed a bit of light in the darkness. And I'll start with giving you a little tour of the UI. On the left here, there's your viewer, and it gives you a representation of the clip that you have selected from the strip right below with all your clips. On the right here, there is your node graph. Think of it as your layer stack if you're coming from Premiere or Photoshop. Right below here, there's the different tool set that you have in the program. You've got your primaries, your HDR wheels, there's different tabs that do different things. And today we'll focus on the primaries, and especially lift, gamma gain and offset. Down there, you've got your scopes. And I encourage you to work with at least your RGB parade and your vector scope. Now let's have a look to our project settings and let's click on the little cog wheel that we have at the bottom right hand corner here. So I am in the master settings right here. Timeline format, I'm currently set to HD, but if your project is UHD or 4K DCI, for example, that's where you change it and you select the right resolution from the drop down here. Video monitoring, I'm set to HD because my timeline is set to HD. If it was set to 4K, for example, I'll pick a matching preset from here. Data levels, I'm currently set to full because my pipeline expects full levels. Depending on your hardware, you might need to select video, but generally speaking, when you have a computer screen, you'll be set to full levels. So let's set up our color management so that our images look proper. So usually I color manage using nodes, but today we're gonna work in YRGB color managed for a bit more simplicity. So that's what you need to select. And we're gonna disable automatic color management. Let's go in this drop down and select custom. For my input color space, since most of my clips here are ARRI, I'm going to select ARRI Log C3 from this drop down. Timeline color space, I'm going to work in DaVinci Y Gamma Intermediate. It's a big and large color space that is bigger than most camera spaces, so it's gonna be perfect for us. Timeline working luminance, I'm going to set it to custom, and I'm gonna go all the way up to 10,000 nits so that my dynamic range isn't constrained in my grading space. Output color space, I'm going to set it to Rec.79 Gamma 2.4, which is the standard we're gonna grade to today. If you're having a computer screen, you might wanna set it to Rec.709 Gamma 2.2. Limit output gamma to output color space, this is perfect. Input DRT, I'm going to set it to none because I don't want DaVinci to do any tone mapping or gamma compression to my image at this stage. Output DRT, I'm going to set it to DaVinci. You can set it to luminance mapping, saturation preserving or red if you so desire. This is purely subjective. I tend to prefer DaVinci because I prefer how flames and skin tones under specific lighting conditions tend to look. And then very quickly, we'll go into our camera row because in my clips, I've got some red footage and I want to set it right. So I'm going to go red, full res premium, 16 bit, 
decode using project because I want all my red wall clips to be decoded in the same way. Color science IPP2, red white gamut RGB, gamma curve log 3G10. I'm gonna untick everything here. Chroma noise reduction, I'm going to enable it. Flashing pixel adjust, I'm gonna set it to low because this tends to take care of dead pixels, for example. And very important here, I'm going to select all of these because I want the intention of the cinematographer to be present when the raw files are decoded. So I'm gonna take my ISO, exposure, color temp, and tint. Then I'm going to hit save. And now we're gonna to need to tell DaVinci in which color space is each of these clips. So I know that this one and this one are RE log C3. So I'm gonna make sure that that's what is selected here. Okay. These are R3Ds, so red raw. Actually, because I'm working color managed, DaVinci is detecting automatically the input color space for these clips. So I don't need to set it here. Actually, it does it for me automatically. There's no option for me to do it. And finally, we've got a Sony S-Log3 clip. So I'm just gonna make sure that it's tagged appropriately. So S-Log3, S-Gam3 Cine. Okay, we're all set. Good. Now, before we start grading and using lift, gamma gain and offset, I'd like to show you what each of these tools do on your image. So for that, I'm going to go to my grayscale ramp and I'm gonna select my waveform here. And we see that we have a big fat S curve here. And this is my output transform from my color management that enables that. So I'm going to disable it really quickly. Output color space, I'm going to set as same as timeline so that it's basically not doing anything. And now we have a straight line. So it's going from pure black, which is zero here, to pure white. Right now, DaVinci isn't doing anything to this signal, okay? It's a pure straight line. So I'm going to create a new node and I'm going to work with my offset right here. So it's this tool. So if you drag the ring from down there, you'll see that it's doing something to my ramp. And I'm going to do it with my panel. And you see how this ramp is moving. It's moving in a linear way. So the relationship between the black point and the white point is preserved. And this is like opening and decreasing the iris in my camera. Now, if you pick the center point from your trackball here, and you drag it left to add some yellows, this will be like warming up the white balance of your camera. And if you drag it right to the blues, it'll be like cooling off the white balance of your camera. And in fact, you see the waveform here change when I move my offset. Now let's go to gain. So it's mostly affecting the highlights, but not only my highlights, it's also affecting the rest of my signal, except my pure blacks. Now let's go to my lift right here, and it's doing the opposite. It's mostly affecting my blacks and my shadows and less so my highlights, and it's not affecting my white point. And now let's go to my gamma wheel, totally different. So it's not, as you see, it's not preserving the linearity of my signal. It's mostly affecting the mid portion of my signal. Now that we have seen how each of these tools work, I'm going to enable again my output transform. So output color space, I'm going to set it to Rec 709, Gamma 2.4. I'm gonna hit save. And then again, we see our S-curve that is back. I'm gonna refresh my thumbnails here. There we go. And let's start with our red clip. So I'm going to create two additional nodes. I'm going to label this one exposure. 
the next one I'm going to label it white balance and the last one contrast and we're gonna go really simple today I'm going to apply this node graph to the rest of my clips so I'm going to select the rest of them right click on this one and go apply grade and now each of these clips have the same node graph so back to my retro let's toggle back to my RGB parade good I'm going to use my offset right here and I'm going to shut down the iris of my camera just a little bit like so before after in my white balance node I want to add a little bit more color separation between the tones of my image so I'm going to cool off a little bit my white balance using my offset right here until I feel like it feels the way I want to go for this shot. Good. Now I'm going to select everything, disable, enable. So this is before we touch the shot, this is after. So now let's go to our Sony clip. And right off the bat, we feel like something is a little bit off with our clip. It's a bit too open when it comes to exposure and the white balance is leaning a little bit too much towards like red magenta right here. So I'm going to compensate for those things. So using my offset again to mimic exposure in my camera, I'm going to shut down the iris a little bit like that. Then I'm gonna move to my second node in my white balance node and I'm gonna drag my center point right here from my offset bowl and I'm going to try and place it somewhere where it's feeling a little bit more natural. I'm going to move to my contrast node, to my third node, and I'm going to increase my gain and decrease my lift at the same time. And it's going to add contrast to my image like that. Before my contrast adjustment, after. And when I select my three nodes, this is before we touch the image, this is after. Now let's move to our red shot here. And let's say we want to go a bit more creative for this one. And I imagine that we want it to feel a little bit more like a thriller movie vibe shot in the Middle East or somewhere like that. So I'm going to, first of all, so go to my node number one going to shut down my offset just a little bit like that before after then go to my white balance my second node I'm going to warm this shot a little bit using my offset like that before after then I'm going to go to my third node and I'm going to play with my contrast so I'm going to stretch my gain up gamma down a little bit Lift up, gamma down, okay, before, after. So I've added a little bit more pop to this image. Now I'm going to select those three nodes. I'm going to go before, after. Whole different vibe, right? So you can use those tools, those primaries controls, in order to get a more creative look as well. Now let's move to this shot. Seems properly balanced, but in terms of exposure, might be a bit too open. So I'm going to go to my exposure node again and drag my offset down until I feel it's better before, after. I'm going to go to my contrast node and I'm going to drag my lift down, gain up a little bit. Yeah. And now we have this other shot which is a different angle from the same scene. And we see that they don't match. So I'm gonna try and get them closer. So for that, I'm going to grab a still of this shot. I'm going to go to my gallery, right click and hit grab still. So it's saving a snapshot of this still. I'm going back to my red shot and I'm going to play the still. You hit that button right here. 
and I'm going to drag the wipe so that it's covering everything. And you see that these shots do not match. The other shot is leaning a lot more towards like red magenta. You see that in your vector scope right here. So I'm going to try and align them a little bit more. So I go to my second node. I'm going to use my offset again and move my color balance towards the green tones to compensate for the mismatch, like so, before, after. And now I'm going to go to my third node, my contrast node. I'm going to stretch my gain and my lift like that, so that they align a bit more in contrast. Now if we go from one shot to the next, we'll see that I cut out a lot better. Okay, now this shot. Beautiful looking shot. Let's see how it feels if in our white balance node we go a little bit southwest and go towards green a little bit. Before, after, feels much better to me. I like it. Okay. Let's park it here. Eighth shot. So we've got some kids playing with paint powder somewhere in India, I guess. And let's try and get a bit more color contrast for this one. So I'm going to go to my white balance node and I'm going to cool off this shot going southeast a little bit. Or after somewhere like that could be early morning or something I can see more separation between the tones of my image I'm gonna go to my contrast node and I'm going to stretch my gain like that before after go gamma down a little bit yeah before, after, to make that street pop a little bit more. Good, and if we disable everything, before we touch the image, after, before, after. Looks pretty cool to me now. So in this video, I tried to demonstrate you what you could do with those simple tools, which are lift, gamma, and gain, and offset and they are very powerful they don't break your image and they are very broad and organic in the results that they give you and it feels natural so i encourage you to use them before anything else when you're grading all right guys that's it for today i hope that you found this first episode helpful please leave a like comment down below tell me about future topics you would like me to cover Follow me on Instagram, I'll leave a link down in the description. And of course, do not forget to subscribe to the channel for not missing future updates. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.